Hey there guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you a rank 1 strategy for the Mecheron Clash of Wills. So earlier today I did a live stream and we did our usual blind run. Um, on the live stream we figured out this boss and got a rank 1 within 2 tries. It ended up being a lot easier than we expected, or maybe we did expect it to be easy. In any case, we got a rank 1 in 2 tries. Um, I'm going to be going back with the same party, slightly optimized, because I've taken some time to clean up the clear. And I'm going to be showing you a way to do it pretty reliably. We're going to be going back over the course of the event with some budget runs later on. Um, so we're going to turn on all modifiers. Now at the current time, there is a bug where you can only maximize all modifiers at EX17. That is, a, there's, a, there's a notice in the news, it is a confirmed bug, they're going to be fixing that. So until then, you need EX17, hopefully by tomorrow it'll be fixed to be back down to EX16 for all modifiers. But, this is the party we're going to go with. We're going to go with a water party, and we're not using any Neovision pluses. You don't really need them yet, at least. Uh, so Aang's going to be the leader, Chao and Hayo and Aang are going to deal the damage, Kaito for water support, Melissa for being amazing, and Abigail for being an awesome tank. So let's get in here and give it a go. Um, I still don't have a data mine for the boss's AI, so I'll just be telling you my observations after trying him out off camera for about an hour, and this is what I've noticed with a little bit of practice. I could be wrong on some mechanics, this is just what I've noticed. Anyway. During the ambush, the boss will put up uh, some mitigations and buffs. These can be dispelled with plain old regular dispel. If you're trying to turn one OTK him with no modifiers or something, make sure you're always dispelling um, before you deal your damage. Anyway, he also imperiled us. So what we're going to do, Chow is going to quad cast. We're going to bar Waterga in Waterga, Protectga. And then Netherworld Stream just to hit the boss. Aang is going to do Bolting Strike. Then he's going to do Impaling Arrow and Cleansing Arrow. That'll dispel the boss's buffs as well as cleanse our Imperil. Uh, Kaito on this turn will just do uh, Destable and Deep to break the boss, get some morale gain. <clears throat> um, now we've got Melissa with passive provoke and she's higher in the party order than our Abigail. Um, that's optional, you don't have to do it that way, but for the way I'm doing it, I think it helps a little bit for uh, survivability. Anyway, on turn one, Abigail is going to use Shelga. We're gonna do Omni Cover with Methodical Mitigation and we're gonna do Contingency Plan. Melissa will do Shared Immunity Chronic Flow and Parasol Shield. And Hayo is going to start in the base form and then go to the shift form. And he is going to do uh, in this order I will master the sword, guard claw, and then blazing spirit to imbue the boss. This boss deals a really high amount of physical damage and some pretty hard magical damage as well. So, so in order to deal with the really hard physical hits, we're going to have mostly imbuing the boss on the dangerous turns, which is turn one. So what the boss is going to do, first of all, the boss has a random chance to do the emote, show me the limits of your power. I think that's the trigger for you having to use an LB on the following turn. Uh, he will not always do this. It seems to be about a 50-50 chance every single turn for him to do that or not. If you see that, I'm going to suggest you make sure to use an LB on the following turn, but I don't know if that's required. I don't have the data mine, but I think, just from you know deduction, that seems to be the case. Anyway, the boss is going to do laser arrows during his turn. That's going to be an AoE cover-ignoring non-elemental magical attacks. So your whole party needs to be a little bit bulky against magic attacks. With Shelga plus three and the racial mitigations we've cast, we should be okay. The boss will also do some physical water and light attacks, but we're imbuing the boss this turn, so it's not that big a deal. Uh, the boss will also do tactical laser, a single target non-elemental very high modifier attack. We should be fine with Abigail Omni covering. 
Then the boss is going to do a bunch of random actions, either Power Stomp, Laser Shower, or Laser Lance. Power Stomp is a single target physical attack. It's going to be fine this turn. Laser Shower is an AoE non-elemental attack, which will be covered by Abigail. And then Laser Lance is a cover-ignoring, provoke-ignoring, single-target, non-elemental magical attack. Meaning, the boss could randomly pick on the same person, like a DPS, and just nuke them down. It should only deal like 10,000 or so damage to people it hits. As long as he's not like really ganging up on one random DPS, it should be fine. But just be aware, there is a chance that the boss could use Laser Lance on the same squishy three times in a row, and they might die. If that happens, reset reset the fight. Anyway, let's give it a go. So for the most part, this should be a totally fine turn. The only problem is if he like really picks up on someone. So there's the laser arrows, cover ignoring. Um, well, there was the attack on Kaito that I told you about. So the boss really picked on Kaito multiple times. Um, Honestly, Kaito dying is not the biggest deal. We're going to keep going and just not care. If he had killed a DPS, we probably would have reset. But, um, yeah, so the boss picked on Kaito with Laser Lance, I think, three times or twice at least. Uh, you know, it's going to happen sometimes. Unfortunate. Uh, I, I wish he wouldn't have picked Kaito so many times in a row. But we're going to keep going. Big deal. Uh, it was Kaito. He don't care. Uh, so what we're going to do now, Abigail is going to cover... We're going to SP Drone Type L. This is going to be a 200 light resist buff. Uh, then we're going to Drone Decoy. That is going to provoke to override Melissa's provoke. We don't want Melissa really provoking this turn. After Abigail does her thing, Melissa will use her LB targeting Abigail. Uh, let's see here. Chow on this turn is going to do Beast Killer on Hayo. We're going to do Ocean's Magic. Then we're going to refresh Bar Waterja. And then we're going to do In Wardaga again. <laughs> Aang on this turn will do Clear Sun, Rolling Mist, and the Bolting Strike. Or one of his attacks. It doesn't really matter which one. They all throw the Morale Gauge. Uh, Kaito in the base form on this turn is going to do Torrential Downpour. Receding Tide, and Swelling Current. That'll give the party Mirage. Uh, and then Hayo is going to do Crimson Undermine, Ultimate Flame. These are filling the Morale Gauge. And then Shield Claw. So this turn we used Melissa's LB, and I do believe that satisfies the requirement for using LB if the boss had done the emote. I don't, I don't think he did on, on our clear, but it's fine. Anyway, this turn is going to be mostly the same kind of stuff. There you go. You saw that. Show me the limits of your power. So he wants us to do an LB next turn, which is fine because we're going to. So here's some attacks. Hopefully the boss doesn't pick on anyone um, too many times. And as you saw there, like, the boss hurts a lot. You saw Abigail go almost to death. This is, this is going to be the challenge of the fight. I don't feel like the DPS is a problem on this clear. I think the boss is very easy to damage cap. Uh, the issue is going to be survivability. Thankfully, Abigail is straight amazing. I don't know how well lower tier tanks will, will work, but could be fine. I don't know. But all, all I do know is Abigail is taking a beating. Anyway, now we've got Abigail's SLB, so that's going to help quite a bit for survivability. We're going to go ahead and do that. Now, we're going to be bursting on turn 4. Now, the reason I'm not rolling amping yet is you're going you're to see when we do it. But for now, we're going to start getting ready for bursting next turn. Chow is going to start his ramping amplify this turn. because We're going to double burst. We're going to burst next turn and the turn after. And we want the turn after to be the 100% amplify of Chow. So we're going to rolling amplify on Chow, arcane supplementation, which is also going to mirage us. Arcane sup is a three stack mirage. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to do uh, malediction and fluffy watchdog. Aang is going to do poised concentration for the 180 Amplify, we're going to do Awakened Divinity, and Aang is going to do Morning Dew for the long-term Amplify. 
Kaito can go to the shift form here. Uh, now, the boss put up a defense buff, so we're going to use Kaito to Crashing Waves. We're going to Sun Glitter for the field, and we're going to Natural Flux for the big water in peril. Uh, Melissa on this turn is going to Beast Killer on Aang. We're going to Human Killer on Aang, and then we're going to Minutes to Might to fill the morale gauge. Now, we are actually a little bit behind in morale because Kaito died earlier. As you can see, with our clear, it's kind of fine. Um, but we're also EX18s. So we started slightly higher in the morale bar. Um, if you're suffering with morale gauge problems on this fight, uh, make sure no one dies. You know, I'm kind of ignoring the fact that Kaito died on turn one. If that happens to you, do the fight again, and you'll, you'll be higher in morale. Anyway, Hayo on this turn is going to do... Uh, refine Stance, we're going to do Guard Claw, and we're going to imbue the boss again with Blazing Spirit. So, we're going to be bursting next turn. Now this turn, not much is going on, it's mostly random target attacks. Um, Flood of Scenarius and all that, and then Power Stomp, Laser Thing. Again, the Laser Lances, as long as no one is being like really bullied with Laser Lance, you should be fine. Although at this point we've got 85 mitigation from Abigail. So, I think you're going to be fine no matter what happens. The only dangerous turn really is turn one, potentially turn two, uh, especially for your tank. Anyway, now we are going to burst. Now, there's one of two scenarios that's going to happen here. First of all, let's go ahead and do our burst or get it ready. So, we're going to SLB, everyone, uh, shifted LB, Hayo, and shifted LB, Kaito. That'll give us the 100 count chain score. It'll also be our, um, our damage cap, hopefully. Uh, they're all Extreme Nova. Okay, so we're either going to push the 50 threshold or we're not. It shouldn't really matter if you do or you don't. I'm going to explain both scenarios. Let's go ahead and do our burst before we worry about the rest of the, 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 the units. We hit exactly 50, so we did push the threshold. Okay, so... We're going to continue the video as if we pushed the threshold. Well, we did push the threshold. I will explain if you didn't. If you didn't push the threshold, what you would do is... You know what? I'm going to do it anyway. So, that's a waste. No, we're going to do it anyway. So, what you would do is after your burst, you would use Melissa to imbue the boss with uncontrollable darkness. And we don't have to do that right now because we pushed the threshold. But if you didn't, you're going to want to do that. Then you're going to want to use Melissa to double bar Darkja to fill the LB gauge of the party. And then Abigail is going to refresh her cover. Then she is going to double bar Faraja. And that will fill a bunch of LB gauge for the party. Now, we did push the threshold. Therefore, then there, there is no HP lock, by the way. You, you could actually have pushed the boss way lower. Because we pushed the threshold... The boss gave himself a lot of Mirage stacks, undispellable buffs, as well as, um, uh, what else did he do? I forget. Undispellable buffs, we look. And Centaur's Rage. Oh, he also imperiled us. Big deal. Um, so, what we're going to do, if you didn't push the threshold last turn, you wouldn't do this. But when you do push the threshold, whether it's on turn 4 or turn 5, we are going to use Kaito to Unpredictable Tide to get rid of the Undispellable buff. We are going to Torrential Blade Storm. This is a multi-type attack, which will get rid of all the Mirage stacks on one cast. And then we are going to Downpour for the Killer buff. Um, the Damage Dealers are going to LB again. Hayo is not quite ready. That's okay. We can use um, Abigail to fill him up. So... Hayo, or Abigail, is going to on... It's a little bit tricky. You're going to want to use Methodical Omnicover on the turn that you don't push the threshold. Uh, yeah, so do that. And also, you can... Um, yeah, so... If you're pushing the threshold on turn 5... You want to have used Methodical on turn 4 with Abigail. Uh, but we're doing it on turn 5. We pushed it last turn. It's a little bit, a little bit tricky depending on what turn you push the threshold. Anyway, uh, what was I saying again? 
Yeah, so we're going to now use methodical and double bar for radio to fill the LB gauge. And that should give you another burst for your DPS. So go ahead and do a burst again. Hit him as hard as you can. This turn, we've got the 100% Amplify from Chow, so your damage should be pretty good. Uh, now, Melissa is going to, after all that, she is going to do... Uh, let's see here. I forget, I forget the one it's called. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. No, we're just gonna we're just gonna bar dark here three times. To fill the LB gauge again. So this turn is gonna be some more attacks, uh, a healing as well, and some buffing and all that kind of stuff. It's it's fine. So here we go. Buffing, healing, cloaking device again, uh, some attacks, some of them bypass cover. We are using omni cover. Should be fine. Yeah, totally fine. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and try to kill the boss. We should be able to. So because the boss has these buffs, we can, um, let's see here, just normal attack Kaito. And that will dispel the boss's buffs with his normal attack in the ship form. Make sure he's in the ship form. Um, now we can just LB again. We can just triple, uh, let's see, we can bar for Aja with our Abigail. And that should be all you need to do. And you can use killers with Melissa if you want to. Honestly, we don't really need to. We'll go, we don't even need to do that. Yeah, what is, what is burst again? And that should be the end of the boss. There you go, handled. And, there, and, there, and there's your rank one. Uh, Melissa could have done, you know, Bar Darkja or Killers or whatever you need to fill the LB gauge. Um, you could have used Seconds of Support for more modifier damage on Melissa. But there it is. So this clear should be with this party, you know, to, you know, to, be, to be clear. With this party, it should be a pretty simple clear. Um, it's just going to be a little bit of either you push the threshold or you don't on turn 4 or turn 5. But uh, you just have to adjust. Just make sure the turn that you don't push the threshold is the one you methodical mitigation on Abigail, and the turn after you push the threshold is when Kaito wants to do unpredictable downpour and torrential blades to get rid of all the boss's stuff. But there it is. So we've got Aang and Hayo doing big boy damage, and Chao a little bit underperformed, but still not bad at all. And there's the clear. Like I said, not, not too terrible, not too terrible. All right, so... Uh, let me turn on all the modifiers as I show the gear for you. And here's the party. So as far as espers go, um, we've got Beast Overkiller on Hayo with Ifrit. The other two are just using regular old killer espers. Um, and then the gear for Abigail, she is in party slot 1 with Passive Provoke. It makes turn 1 a little bit easier to survive. That is actually optional. Uh, but she does have decent... Um, Water, light, and actually, actually, she doesn't really need fire resist, honestly. So you can ignore that because uh, Abigail auto buffs it on turn one. Anyway, there's the gear and her own card for the morale game. Abigail is using a counter build with Blizzard Orb. We've got decent fire, water, and light resist. Uh, with modifiers, we're at 145, etc. Um, without modifiers, it's 100 higher. But there you go. Uh, Abigail is also 100% physical evasion because the boss only has 100 accuracy. So with Kaito's 50 evasion down, um, you can still have a 50-50 chance to evade the, the physical damage and it helps a lot because oh boy does the boss physical damage really hurt. Uh, and then we're using a Omni Tank card with both defense and spirit on it to survive. Survival is a little tricky here. You could also add, like, for example, Lilith to passive provoke and be your physical tanker, and then you'd probably be totally fine on the physical stuff. Uh, Hayo in the base form is just using some uh, autofill morale, celestite rod, treasured ring, etc. Some you know mitigation stuff, kind of kind of whatever. Shift form is using his own special card. Uh, some killers, some chain speed, and uh, there it is. He's maxed on everything. Guardian Chow, same thing, maxed on everything. And the rest of the party has, like, 
a tiny amount of light and water resist. Honestly, not that much. But, you know, when possible, I tossed on a little bit of water resist. Also, um, your provoker needs to be immune to paralyze. Just FYI. And then Aang. Here he goes. He is using this gear right here. And there it is. That's the clear. Oh, Kaito. And Kaito. And Kaito is using dual wielding a morale card. He's also using a water and a light weapon um, to seal the boss. It's probably not required to do both of them. Probably one is enough. I don't know, but I'm using both. There you go. And shift form identical. So, okay. Hope it helps. Turn chart will be in the comment. Uh, the only, you know, slight variation is you might have to change up turn four and turn five, depending if you push that threshold on turn four. Okay. See you in a bit.